Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. I'm looking forward to getting some momentum. I'm in a good headspace, I'm mentally prepared. We start with Fruitcake and Razor Blade, which is actually Blood Rites. Ale 3, well, maybe if it's after 5 p.m. 3A32, okay, let's, let's get a move on here. Dude, this is a very interesting choice, because Kamikaze and Blood Rites are, in my mind, the same archetype of item, which is to say that they're both pretty bad, Except if you get the right synergy, at which point they become amazing. Which is more likely to be amazing? I would say probably Kamikaze is more likely to be good, because you have the host hat and you have Pyromania. Or sorry, just Pyro, not Pyromaniac. No, Pyromaniac, my mistake. One day I'll get that right. Whereas with um, Blood Rites, you pretty much need Isaac's Heart. But Pyromaniac is a special item. Are you kidding me? Did you see how he got run down there? That was out of control, absurd, ridiculous. But, um... It feels like Isaac's heart shows up all the dang time. So that's why I'm keeping blood rights. Because I'm holding out hope that... Isaac's heart will show up on this of all runs. This is a pretty bad start, all things considered. If only because Fruitcake makes it... Is this an XL? No, just a, just a long floor, kind of. Um... But uh, I'm holding out a hope that Isaac's heart shows up. This isn't like an okay start, except Fruitcake is dangerous. That, that's pretty much where I fall on this one right now. We, fruitcake is also great sometimes. I mean, we have 12 cents because of Fruitcake, but we also lost a little bit of uh, our HP because of Fruitcake uh, at, at the same time. So uh, if I could just get this guy to come down this way, weaken him up a little bit, and then maybe get him to blow up next to the, No, okay. Sure, next time. No, don't sweat it. Cube of Meat is actually a pretty good pickup here because it insulates us from a little bit of the fruitcake danger. And that Explosivo shot is going to be real nice. It didn't quite do as much as I thought it would actually in uh, in hindsight, but uh, that's okay. Still more than we would have gotten without it. Um, you hearing this guy? It's like the suppression bug from XCOM 2. He was just, you know, shooting non-stop there. Okay, we lived, we get a cube of meat, we have one HP, that's not good. We're gonna say no to Kamikaze, and we're gonna head down to the next floor, and we really, really need to keep our wits about us on this one, at least temporarily. Um, this is fine. Sloth is one of the bosses, uh, mini-bosses, I guess, that you would like to fight the most, because he gives you a potential to get something good in the form of a card, so it could basically be anything, um, you know, to your heart's content. Uh, and he's not that hard to avoid. You know, he, he's no... Um, you know, ultra, uh, ultra, ultra, ultra enemy. <laughs> you know the, you know the one that drops the left hand, ultra enemy. Okay. Rules card. Deny his gifts to attain your reward. The blank rune was Awas, which I figured I'd pop it, even if it was Algiz or something like that. You know, maybe I could get my my money's worth, so to speak. Is money's worth like a real last name of a British arist aristocratic family? Dude, these Eden runs have been fucking with me lately. Okay, here's our actual seed. Luckily, we weren't in too deep. Uh, that's deep pockets, I think. But it might be number two, but I'm pretty sure that's a wallet, not a diaper. 7QEF2SA4 with a D20. Yeah, it's, that's deep pockets now that I look over there. Um, I, I feel the need to sincerely apologize. I mean, we were killing it for a while on that streak, or at least doing pretty well. And now I've kind of shit the bed a few times uh, in, in the past couple of weeks. Uh, inevitably, whenever I... Th there's like a few archetypes of comments that show up, and they're all well-meaning, so please don't take this as an insult. But when I'm winning runs, even if I'm playing zanily, which is not a word, people go, ah, oh, man, I wish when he used to play more zany. I wish when he had one HP, he would just take a deal with the devil and kill himself for the for the humor of the situation. And then when I'm playing poorly, people go, man, if NL doesn't like Isaac anymore, he should just stop playing it. I still like I. You go through ebbs and flows, man. Just because um, Mark Beerley, uh, you know, had Tommy John surgery, that doesn't mean he doesn't love pitching anymore. You know, it's just you go through uh, you go through slumps, you go through ebbs, you go through flows. One of those is the good one. One of them is the bad one. Um, and, you know, when you're going through hell, keep going. That's what Winston Churchill said. If anything, I'm, I'm disappointed in that last run because it had the potential to kind of blossom. And uh, instead, I just died. You know, before I even had the chance to to see if it would ever uh, become more than it, it, the sum of its parts. But 
I still like, uh, I, this is my go-to game to record all the time. It should be clear at this point, this is like, it's the same way your grandma has done like Sudoku puzzles for like 15 years. That's my Isaac, man. This is my go-to like daily, um, you know, wake up your brain, have a little bit of mental stimulation going on, uh, and, I, and I get to share it all of you, for which I'm very uh, fortunate most of the time. Now, I, I mean, I should be using the D20 at some point, but at the same time, we haven't really come across a great opportunity. I like keys. I, I really like having keys early on in a in a run. It's very helpful. I don't want to re-roll the battery charge that's back there because it's trapped behind a pot anyway. And there's nothing to re-roll there. So I'm just going to stomp on Famine. Hopefully that'll get the kill. We'll get a Spirit Heart and a Cube of Meat. Not going to re-roll the uh, Spirit Heart either. So you know what? Drop the Lover's card, re-roll them, we picked up a bomb. We could use that bomb to get a battery charge, or we could save it for something on the next floor, which is what I'm actually gonna do. Hmm, a boss trap room. Yeah, okay. I might have hesitated on this if I didn't have a cube of meat, or ball of bandages more accurately, but um, ball of bandages is going to allow me to cut through these enemies pretty easily, which is important because my DPS is like hot ass trash right now. Anytime you can get a free kill like that, I like to I like to take it, but I won't deny there's a little bit of risk involved starting immediately next to an enemy. Some people want it all. I just want a bandage ball. Cause everything means nothing. It's like a James Bond video game. That's everything or nothing. It's Two different things. If there's any uh, artist I probably should not uh, imitate in a karaoke form, it is uh, Alicia Keys. Turns out she's got a pretty good voice. You know, not not necessarily uh, my genre of choice, but you got to appreciate some virtuosity when it happens. You know, she's got golden pipes and she can sing too. I don't even know what that was supposed to mean. I was like. Uh, Complimenting the plumbing in her place of residence, but now it sounds like I've, you know, begrudgingly admiring of her fallopian tubes or something. Now, now that that awkwardness is uh, out of control, move my reaction when the cringe, the cringe is too strong, the cringe NL, okay. Um, I, I, I do want to go to this curse room. I think I'm going to go to this curse room. Any consumable the curse room would give me would be positive, so I don't need to have a d20. If it gives me troll bombs, you can't re-roll them anyway. Not in, uh... Not in, uh, Afterbirth, at least. I can't remember if you could do it in Rebirth. I, you could do it in Vanilla. Okay, well, this is a strange situation, isn't it? I don't know what's going... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I did re-roll a battery charge there. And to be honest with you, I think I'd do it again. Now, I'm gonna go... A little harder than I should on this guy. Try to get him to pay out with something useful. Okay, you know what? We'll Emperor card out. Uh, and we may, depending on what we get from our boss and potentially our deal with the devil as well, um, see what's going on with that Demon Judgment a little later. The Screw is good. And Sack Dagger is awesome. So I guess at this point we're probably saying no to that Demon Judgment. Which is unfortunate because sometimes it does pay out early enough to make it viable, but... Uh, in this situation, we really can't afford to. Um, I haven't been to the item room yet, so we gotta do that. There's a bomb available, or a, a tinted rock available here, which would be good. If we get enough money somehow, we may want to go to our shop and try to buy a spirit heart as well, just to keep ourselves, you know, in the money here. I had a great idea for a song, uh, based on Brendan Fraser's magnum opus, The Mummy, and also The Mummy Returns. And to a much lesser extent, The Mummy 3, uh, Rise of the Dragon Emperor, or whatever the third one's called. It was the only one I saw in theaters. It was a terrible decision. I was too... I was old enough to know better, but still too young to care. And it, it goes a little something like this. You always give me your mummy. The mummy's name is Emotep. If I remember correctly, also Oded Fair was in those films. Might be Oded Fear now that I think about it, which is a badass name when you say it like that. You always give me your Rachel Vice. And she played the love 
Interested in the middle of the third and first and second film she kissed. Brendan Fraser. She kissed Brendan Fraser. Okay. That one's never going to take off, but I figured if I just keep rolling with it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to give up the D20, even though the D20 is a little cooler for an item that is uh, potentially a run saver. And to be honest with you, we could use it. I'm very confused. Now we got Abel. Okay, so it's a small floor. I just got switched up here. You know what? As a as my penance for doing the um, right, that's the library. As our penance for doing the non-absurd decision by getting rid of the D20 here, I'm gonna try to play this Joker and get him to pay out with something useful here at great personal cost potentially to myself. Dude, though seriously, come on, you're really gonna do this to me right now? Yeah, there we go. Actually worth it, I think. Um, and you know what? One bomb charge, and that's not what we call bombs in the world, but allows us to get that, and then we'll get the heck out of here. And We spent enough time down here, I'd say, but the synth oil pickup is really good. Now we don't have to use sack dagger for everything, but we will anyway, you know? We don't we really don't have to eat craft dinner if we got a million dollars. Yeah, we don't have to, but we just eat more. Dijon ketchup, that's a... Canada's uh, number one export, The Bare Naked Ladies. And I'm not talking about Pamela Anderson. I accidentally picked up Bob's Brain there. That being said, Bob's Brain is, you know, I'm still a staunch defender, you know. I'm not, um, Bob's Brain is not my candidate, but I would still canvas for it if they were the best out of the available options. Um, it's it's going to be problematic from a damage standpoint, for sure. Uh, and, and will hit us occasionally, but it also gives us, like synth oil, but not really like synth oil, uh, it gives us a, a, a somewhat more long-range means of doing damage, which means that I don't have to 100% rely on Sack Dagger um, if I don't want to, but I'm probably like mostly going to anyway. Bob's brain is back. That missed? really wish I could see my HP right now. But I think we have at least like four or five. And it's only going to grow. Okay, a fly item. Forever alone is pretty good. Paralysis this is not, but this is like an ideal room to use it on so we don't get uh, screwed at all, basically. The reason I want to see my HP is, you know, if we get a deal with the devil here, I want to be fully informed of how badly I'm fucking myself over by taking it. Alright, so you get a little bit of damage from Peep and then you just walk backwards. Tyrone, on the flooded caves, uh, Peep produces urine to serve as creep, but the urine, due to the moisture in the caves, should be more diluted and not cause as much damage, I feel, or at least be smaller because of its relative unconcentrated nature. We will take HP here. Um, you know what, let's do a little exploration. There's no rush here. We're doing fine. Bad habit of mine is not looking for secret rooms outside of dailies. You know, the same way a kid, you know, oftentimes won't eat his vegetables unless, you know, mom's like, I'll give you a subscription to Nintendo Power if you eat your broccoli for a month. Um, that's, that's pretty much me with these secret rooms. Like, it makes, not that I'm speaking from experience on the Nintendo Power thing. Um, it, it is good for the run when you have extra bombs uh, to look for your secret rooms, even though Blasting Cap is hot garbage and probably substantially more trouble than it's worth at this point. Um... But uh, I gotta, I gotta find intrinsic value in that. That's that's on me for sure. Good, good shit. Except for that, which was bad shit. You don't want bad shit. You gotta be able to take pleasures in the little things in life. You know, look, look after your gastrointestinal health. Get some good reading done on the toilet. Everyone in this, not everyone, and uh, occasional, uh, relatively small, if I'm being honest, amount of people in this society are obsessed. With, with pooping in the in the optimal fashion. You've heard it. We've talked about it on the show sometimes. People be like, well, I'm going to get a squat toilet because I read on the internet that it keeps your colon straighter and uh, that's, that's good for your colorectal health. Okay, if a literal doctor has told you that and they said get a squat toilet, a toilet where you don't sit down but rather sort of, well, you, you squat and then shit in a hole, um... That's that's fine. If a doctor has told you that, go for it. 
And I don't mean if, if a doctor said it on the internet. Because you can find a doctor to tell you anything, you know. There, there is still science. You can find, like, one person with a, a geology degree that thinks the Earth is flat, okay? We have one doctor saying it on uh, fuckyourhealth.com doesn't matter. You need a scientific consensus for this. Just people, hey, okay, I'm getting a little off track here. But anyway, then get a squat toilet, all right? On the recommendation of your doctor. The smart thing to do, usually, uh, is, is trust your doctor. But I also feel like if you've reached the point in your life where you're min-maxing how you shit. You might want to take a step back and be like, wait a minute. Is everything in my life this perfect? That the, 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 I'm, excuse me, Jennifer, I read this wonderful article on squat toilets. I've decided that the number one problem in my life is that maybe my colon, which is already twisted the fuck up inside of me, you know, it's like four and a half miles long and it fits into my torso, which is like eight inches. Okay, I, I just... Dropped my wrist guard because I'm a hundred years old. You know, I have one of those like gel wrist pads um, uh, That I rest my like arrow key hand on the shooting hand for Isaac and it's a little heavy You know it fell right on my testicles and that that's giving me that old uh, that old pain in the abdomen Oh, all right. Well, that's that's a little distracting as we move onwards here. Uh, that's okay though. A little bit off schedule for boss rush, but there's bigger problems right now. Hopefully that doesn't cause a herniated uh, grape or anything like that. Anyway, what I was getting at is uh, if if you're at the point in your life where you're min-maxing your shit, take a step back and, and I don't know, like volunteer. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but you've clearly got it pretty good. I mean, people two apartments down from you might be like, oh, how are we going to make rent this month? I don't know. I could sell my engagement ring, the symbol of our everlasting love together. Uh, and you're like, mm, maybe, I should get a, maybe I should get a squat toilet so that my colon doesn't get more. My already twisted fucking spaghetti colon doesn't get more twisted than it already is. Is this, uh, I'm not sure if this is in just North America. But I only know that it's for sure North America. And it's not everybody in North America. Several of you watching will not fit into this. But we as North Americans owe it to ourselves and, and the future generations of North Americans to just fucking be okay with some shit. Like, we've been shitting in toilets. And this is a logical fallacy that I'll recognize. Because it'd be like, why would we ever plant crops? We've been doing fine as a hunter-gatherer society um, for, for tens of thousands of years. Okay. But this is not the fucking Neolithic agrarian revolution, okay? We're talking about a fucking squat toilet here. Everybody's all, I'll eat my bananas between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. daily so that I, uh, that's when potassium efficiency uh, is absorbed the best by the human pancreas. It's like, yo, dog, you gotta be okay with not everything in your life being perfect because guess what? You're just gonna die and shit yourself eventually anyway. Take some time, you know, re reevaluate what it is in your life that makes it worth living. If it's shitting, then go for it. But if it's not shitting, take a take a breath, man. You know, slow down. You move too fast. You gotta make the pooping last. It's just the one the one thing that annoys. Well, the one of the three thousand things that annoy me about both people, but also myself. I see myself in this. He's always trying to optimize everything in life, man. You gotta just uh, experience the experience a little bit, and don't take this as like me being. Van Wilder or something like that. That dude took like 13 years to finish his undergrad degree. And in this day and age, you finish your undergrad degree, you know, in most disciplines, you're still unemployable. I'm sorry to be the bit. I'm, I'm not even the bear bet. You knew that already. I knew it when I was going in to, to undergrad. You gotta. Now, a high school diploma from the 50s is basically equivalent to getting your PhD in like molecular uh, gastroastronomy. Which is not a real discipline, but do you know if Heston Blumenthal has if Heston Blumenthal deGrasse Tyson has a way, you'll see that blossom in future years. Anyway, be okay with 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 uh, suboptimal situations. That's gonna make your life so much easier because you're gonna be in so many suboptimal situations, man. Everyone's uh you know oh I'm waiting waiting on uh, my appointment. Uh, I'm just gonna do some. Pilometric exercise is uh, in place here. It's all good, man. You're not gonna make the Olympics like that. You, you, it's all politics. Okay, we're at full HP here. I've gotten off the rails here. That being said, I think we as North Americans uh, should also perhaps consider adopting the bidet. And I say that knowing that it makes me uh, a target for 
I wouldn't say abuse necessarily, but a target for hey, this guy wants water to shoot up his bum. Look, we owe it to ourselves to um, put aside. I've already been here. Put aside what we may consider to be um, unsavoriness and accept that that's a superior way to clean your asshole after you dump a bunch of waste out of it. We're just we're, we're like fucking cavemen over here scraping a, a piece of dead tree against our rectum. More more. Uh, accurately, the, the anal sphincter, um, and just wiping any shit off of it. Uh, this is a gross conversation to be having, but I think we owe it to ourselves to become okay with that grossness and say, you know what? Maybe these countries with the bidet have it right. In uh, in Korea and in Japan, I've used the bidet. I really do feel that if you set aside nationalism, it's the superior form of uh, of anal cleansing. <laughs> Which is my favorite, um, it's my favorite Boris song as well, but anyway. That's, that's an aside point, and you know, I can wait. If, if it, if it takes 80 years to happen, that's fine. I hope that the next generation, because we're already too far gone, I hope that the next generation can put their pride aside and, uh, say, I don't mind having a jet of water shoot in my ass as long as that makes it clean. We're not doing quite as much damage as I thought we were here. Oh my god, we finally found the deal with the devil. I don't remember, we got the goat head from like a curse room, but I'm still gonna run. Because we're so far behind schedule, this one got out of control. We're fighting pestilence in 16 minutes. And we got like a pretty okay run, all things considered. I, where, did the, where did the time go here? Anyway. So that, those are my two big take-homes here. One is, you know, be okay with uh, some things being suboptimal in your life. Of course, you know, as uh, as Bad Company said, if you don't like what you got, why don't you change it? If your world is all screwed up, rearrange it. But um, I don't think we have to apply that philosophy to everything in our lives. And the other one is, let's make bidets happen. We don't have a bidet in our in our apartment. I don't know how how do you set that up. I like I don't want a um, I don't want one you just hook up to like the sink and it makes it look like you live in fucking you know, Doc Brown's makeshift fucking loft or something like that. Doc Brown, by the way, great name for a bidet company. But anyway, um, I, I want one of the ones, you know, it's piped into the wall. Japan, their toilet game is off the charts. There's there's some things I, I like about Japan, some things I, I'm not, I, I prefer about North America, let's put it that way. But uh, the toilet game is out of control. You sit down on the toilet and it makes... Well, many toilets, at least, make a, makes a sound like a or it plays like a tone. And the exclusive reason that that tone exists is to cover this sound and you fart and your brains out. That's so smart. Now you go to the bathroom and you don't have to, like, be embarrassed. You know, you're in, like, a hotel room that's, like, 50 square feet. And you're like, well, they're definitely going to hear this. Instead, now it just plays a tone when you sit down and, and your privacy is protected. In what world, you might say, well, I don't need that, I take silent poops, sure. In what world would you not want that, though? I don't understand, like, I can understand being like, that's not necessary for me. But at the same time, you know, wanting a world where that doesn't exist, oh, well, it would be a little annoying to hear the dulcet tones of a songbird every time someone took a shit. No, it's it's not. You're wrong. Very specific, let's donate. We're not going to boss rush in this run anyway. Then, of course, they've got several... Uh, bidet related functions, most of which I don't understand because they're in Japanese. Um, but then, they're also, the toilet seats are warmed, which is just, I mean, it is making a pretty high tech toilet here, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I probably spend like, I don't know, maybe like 1% of my week on the toilet. Is that, I'm, I'm not, I'm too lazy to run the math, but it's probably in the, in the whole number category. Yeah, we'll take the cancer trinket, even though Endless Nameless is okay. You, you invest in yourself, you know? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much. I'm not as passionate about this issue as it may seem. I'm, I'm kind of hyping it up for comedic effect. I'm mostly okay with, as long as I've got a safe place to defecate, that, you know, nobody's, like, shooting up beside me. That's, you know, if you, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I'm trying to take a shit here, and this guy, I'm like, oh. This is, don't don't poke me with your used needle, please. Okay. We got an Abaddon. We got a little brimstone. We got another guppy item. 
I am. This is a run that I, I can't even really speak about right now. Because I, I know we have Judas' Shadow as well, so we could have, like, killed ourselves at some point and become Dark Judas. But apart from that, I'm like, why am I so slow when the run is good? <laughs> like, we have a lot of good stuff going here. Did I... Did I just lose myself for like an entire floor and like on Curse of the Maze and just not find where I was going? I did get lost for a while, but I didn't think it was that long. By the way, don't take this as like uh, me being like anti North America. I know that people are very quick to jump on that stuff online. You know, you you can uh, be admirants of of a company's or not a company's, but a country's. Uh, uh, differences and and uh, you know still love stuff about your home country Canada's got some amazing stuff going on without making it too political having basically I mean it's not a hundred percent free to, depending on your province but like extremely heavily subsidized healthcare is beautiful you don't you don't know how beautiful it is until you need it like Kate was in the ER a couple of times last year for for non-serious stuff uh, but at the time it seemed serious and, you know, we never had to worry when we went to the hospital. They were like, oh, can we afford this? They were just like, you, you got this card because, you know, you're a citizen and we'll, we'll do what needs to be done. Now, mind you, it can take you like 18 months to, to get a procedure done if you have to get a procedure done. But um, that, that's mostly non-urgent stuff, you know. If they're like, hey, your legs got gangrene, they're probably going to try to chop that shit up the next day. But, um... There's a, there's also some stuff about about America that I like that um, I I mean it it sounds shitty but I'm like I'm I'm trying to think of it right now but there there are some times when I'm in the U S and I'm like that's dope this is a pretty uh, I guess selfish or like juvenile thing to to say as a positive but I think um, it's the right idea that America lets you buy beer in grocery stores most places in Canada don't let you do that and you're like well. You know that that legislation is working because you never see anybody drinking alcohol in Canada, right? It's not like it's a national stereotype to have a Molson Canadian and watch the hockey game or anything like that, right? Um, but, I, you know, I think that's that's forward-facing. Vancouver doesn't have Uber. I know that's a hot-button issue, but... And so maybe I'll better leave it at that. I like that gas is cheaper. I, you know what, actually? I, here's This is a great feel-good conversation. Here's what I love about America relative to Canada. Canada is um, it's a very diverse society, for sure, but um, within the actual like major cities of Canada, there's not that much difference. Like, Vancouver is, is different than Toronto, which is different than Montreal, which is different than Halifax, which is different than Calgary, but not by like that much, right? When you're in the... Right, Vancouver is a little different because the climate is like completely different than the rest of Canada and demographically speaking yes but in America you know if you uh, you start in New York then you go you take like a two hour flight you're down in Florida you know completely different you got the year round summer you know beautiful beaches all sorts of stuff going on down there and then you take like another two hour flight and you're in Texas you're in cowboy country or Austin depending on your perspective uh, you know whatever you're into uh, you get to experience a whole different kind of people, whole different kind of cuisine. Of course, there's all sorts of people everywhere, but I'm just saying, like, th it shifts, you know? And then you take another two-hour flight, you're in, like, Los Angeles. You know, you're in Hollywood. That's amazing. You, could like, get there so quickly. Your country's so large, but still, there's stuff to do, like, all the way down, you know? Oh, there's another uh, non-dead end I didn't see over here. You take, a, a like, a 45-minute flight, you're in San Francisco. Tons of history. Silicon Valley, you know? You take a, a another two-hour flight, you're back up in Seattle, Pacific Northwest. You're basically in America's Vancouver, even though there is a Vancouver in Washington State as well. Um, that's really cool, man. America has, has a lot of cool stuff going on. And a lot of uncool stuff, but so does every country. I, and that's those, those are the countries I know enough about. To, to say that. Well, that's not true. I lived in Korea as well. You know what's dope about Korea? Food is really good and really cheap. Korean cuisine is still some of my favorite in the whole world. And uh, in Korea, at least, it's super cheap. Despite the fact that they are like a completely, like they're like a G8 country. What I don't like about Korea is that if you want to take a sick day, it's not possible to just send you down to the hospital, give you an injection in your butt, fill you up with like adrenaline so you can get through the whole day teaching the six-year-old kids how to say, uh, hi, how are you? 
I'm fine, thank you, and you. Okay. But this, you know, this is what I'm getting at. Every country's got good and bad. It doesn't just come down to the toilets. That being said, Asia's kicking our ass on toilets. But Asia also has, like, they, they have, like, a positive and negative thing. Because sometimes you, you go to, like, a restaurant, and then you're like, what's this? Oh, it's just a hole in the ground you're supposed to bend your knees and shit over. Give me the bidet, please. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll pay an extra, an extra uh, few hundred won for access to a d uh, bidet, please. How's this run going? I mean, like, look at if you look at this, uh, the combination of items we have on this run, we we won't we will not die. Like this is, I know we can go back for that, but I'm, this is how confident I am. We have, uh, we're not playing fantastically, and our damage isn't out of control, but we have a Satanic Bible. That was really good use of that spirit heart. We have a Satanic Bible, you know, Abaddon. Uh, a failsafe in Judas's shadow here. Lots of battery charges, apparently. Um, you know, good future prospects in the form of our uh, goat head. Like, a lot of really, really good stuff going on here that basically renders us, if not unkillable, literally, because of course we're not unkillable, literally, like, pretty likely to not die. I actually thought we would still have invincibility there. So, I'm not really doing a great job of uh, enforcing the unkillability here, because I'm going to get hurt on the way out again, but... Oh well. That's how confident I am, but I'm getting slightly less confident by the second as I take the world's dumbest damage. Okay, so that's where we started, so we'll come back this way. This has been more of a, a commentary-focused run than a, uh, a mechanics-focused run. The big mistake that I'm making on this run... Is, is pretty much like just not giving a shit about Bob's brain. We kind of reached a point where like I, I lost the danger factor and as a result have, have just found myself basically being like, eh, if Bob's brain hits us, it hits us. You know, like we're, we're still sitting pretty regardless. Oh, but I didn't rile anybody up with my, you know, country to country talk. I know on the internet it's like, uh, it's like a, I wouldn't say a meme necessarily because the kids make fun of me when I say it. Dad's talking about memes again, but, uh, you know, it's like a, it's, it's a trope to be, like, anti-America, and I can understand why. Having, I mean, they're our closest neighbors, having spent a decent amount of time in the country across a fairly wide array of places. America has a lot of amazing things about it. It's, it's an amazing country, you know? This is not meant to be like propaganda. Every every country I've been to is amazing in its own way. There's never been a country I've visited. And that's why I always I hate it when like you talk to somebody who's traveled a lot and you're like, "Oh, you went to you went to um Italy. How was that?" It fucking sucked. <laughs> it was it's too touristy. I'm like, "Well, you um, you know, like 50 million people live there. You might have uh might have missed out on, on a lot of good stuff, they, you know. It, the people who write off a whole country, you know, I think they're they're eager to look learned, when instead they just seem dismissive, you know? There's probably beauty to be found in every country. That being said, Alberta no, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna say Alberta sucks. I know Alberta is a province as well. I'm just playing into the Canucks, uh, Flames, Oilers rivalry here. I don't know how I haven't been hit here, but that... One hell of a dodge. Um, you know, every every country's got beautiful things. You can't write it off necessarily. Every country's got some got some stuff that's a little weird too. Canada does for sure, man. There, there's some places in Vancouver. I've lived here for like almost four years now. There are places in Vancouver I will not go. You know, even even though Canada's a safe place, if if. Kate and I are like we're like, oh, what should we do tonight? Well, there was this cool restaurant down here. I'll like look it up and be like. Maybe this is a harmful stereotype that's in the downtown east side, and I don't want to park there because I heard stories of people will smash your car window to steal your Japan Droid CD. You know, like there, there, there's stuff like that that happens. Uh, it happens everywhere, and that's that's you know you can't have the sweet without the sour, man. Probably. I haven't had the sweet without the sour, so maybe maybe my maybe my sweet is somebody else's sour. Maybe when I go to those areas, people are like, "Oh, look at this little shithead. He's only been here for like two two days. He doesn't even know." Like I built this city. I like I I made the sky train tracks, and now I'm falling on hard times, and people are afraid of me. You know, I try to find the best in people, but then sometimes you know, you're, you're 
having a blood test done at, at Life Labs, and the dude comes in and he's like, "Stop selling our secrets to the Chinese government. You're selling our genes to the Chinese government." And I'm like, "Either yeah, are they? Cause like I don't want to assume that you're wrong. Cause I like I like to you know wait for the evidence to present itself. But at the same time, that seems unlikely." Yo, Life Labs, why are you trying to sell our genes to the Chinese government, man? These are my genes. You're trying to give the Chinese government the secret to male pattern baldness and alarming recognition of song lyrics from 18 years ago? I, I, I gotta patent that shit, man. Get me Gregor Mendel. I, I don't know why I pictured like J. Jonah Jameson slamming down like an old-timey telephone. Get me Gregor Mendel! I want Spider-Man's jeans on my desk this instant! Alright, where the heck is this this room here? This runs it's it's getting past my attention span now. Plus, I'm on the verge of getting as political as I get, which is mostly like Be nice to everyone unless they're not nice to you first. Yo, fuck you, NL. I hate being nice to people. Being nice is a privilege that you only get if you are well, comfortable. Poli oh, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I didn't realize that my statement would be so controversial. Whoa, there's something wrong with being angry. There's nothing wrong with being angry. I'm just like, you know, I, I maybe I have an overly, I, idyllic view of things. We should all have an overly Jay Dillick view of things. You know, Jay Dilla, Donuts, he's a record producer. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't deflect the issue. All right, well, I won't deflect the issue. Instead, I'll just come down here to the cathedral. Curse of the Blind, uh, largely not really that dangerous at this point. We will probably get zero items here. So on that floor, we got Dark Bum, which, again, is probably not too, too, too relevant here. I'm just looking... Yeah, this is probably the right way. And we got, um... Spirit of the... Ah, Spirit of the Night. Spirit of the Night reminds me of, of course, um, Labouche's uh, amazing mid-90s jam. It was the rhythm of the night. It doesn't really... Like, I'm not a good singer. I'm more of the... I, I fancy myself being more in, like, the producer role. Or, at the very least, I can man the uh, t-shirt table at your concert but uh, that's 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 about my my extent of the music industry probably I don't know I mean if anyone wants to to pay me like an exorbitant wage to be like the rapper part of your uh, of your new metal or rap rock group I think that's a role I could fit in like, I could be your Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park or something like that. Probably not to the same level of acumen. I mean, that's pretty much where he's, you know, spent his whole life. But if you've already got, like, a, a skinny dude with a little bit of an edge who can really hit those high notes, and then you need, like, a little bit more of a schlubby-looking guy who can come in and be like, Yeah, here's an introspective rhyme. I don't want to think about my thought crimes. And then you'll be like, Whoa, dude. This, combined with the dulcet tones of a Chester Pennington, is really... Taking my introspective moodiness to the next level. I can be that guy for you. I can't be the guy who spins the turntables, though. You're going to need to find somebody else for that. That's, you know, you spend years in school to be able to have that kind of skill there. Help. Oh, he froze him! Spider mod! Stopped him dead in his tracks! What is this message from Josh? One of my friends said, How's your weekend? I have Gchat open in the background just because I was on Gmail before coming into this. I guess, actually, I used emergency contact? I didn't mean to do that. I've been holding it the whole time. I wanted to see what this was. Packed, worth it. Anyway, especially because we got Leviathan. Um, but anyway, one of my friends said, Hey, Josh, how's your weekend? Josh replied, I'm at a Star Wars tea place. My friend, in a moment of astuteness, says, I didn't see them drink tea once in the Star Wars films. And I think that's a great point, but I bring that up because I'm sure that there might be... The, some people out there might take issue with that. Perhaps in the cantina, uh, Chewbacca, he's a teetotaler. He's a known teetotaler. It's extended canon. And, uh, yeah, extended canon in the extended universe. Um, 
So he was drinking some, you know, Bothan tea or something like that. I don't know. I'm eager to find out. What is a Star Wars tea place? What world do we live in? People won't accept a jet of water on a toilet that shoots into your ass and makes it clean. But like, where do you want to go today? Let's go to the Star Wars themed tea place. I'm not saying the Star Wars themed tea place shouldn't exist, especially if the market will bear it. Maybe people have a rich, fulfilling experience there. At the same time, yo, get down with bidets. That's like, you know, I've seen House of Cards. If you guys want your Star Wars tea house legislation, you're gonna have to let me push in my bidet bill. As Senatorial Whip Frank Underwood, I pledge that in my campaign, bidet, there will be a bidet in every bathroom by the year 2018. And also, is that a is that a PS Vita? I gotta get one of those for my car, Meacham. That's not really a good. The Frank Underwood impression is as long gone now. But we got Wiz, so like I'm not thrilled to have the dunce cap. That's a pretty bad item. But at the same time, we got Eight Inch Nails, Monstro's Lung, Serpent's Kiss, and uh. We still have Sack Dagger, and we still have Little Brimstone. We still have one cube of meat. Like, we have the power necessary to win this run, in spite of the fact that, you know, the items that we got, or one of the items that we got was pretty shitty. The rest of the items were actually really, really good. Like, Serpent's Kiss is an incredible item. Monstro's Lung is a fun item. All we need is, like, Tractor Beam to sell it. Ooh, we should check that. That's an actual genuine item. Yeah, if we get Tractor Beam, we're set. But we're set either way, and we have been set for a while. It's just been, you know, running, running the numbers down here. It's taken a while. Butt Bombs. Every time I get Butt Bombs, I want to sing Bloodstone by Judas Priest, but I don't remember enough of it. My only experience with it is playing, you know, the entire Screaming for Vengeance album in Rock Band like 500 times. Bloodstone! Something like that. And then, then in my head, though, it goes, Your temperature's hot! Which is not, I think, how that goes at all. Bloodstone! That's, you know, if you can still download the entire Screaming for Vengeance album for, for Rock Band, maybe play it in Rock Band 4, I'd recommend it. Screaming for Vengeance is a great song. You know, you got another thing coming as a classic everyone's familiar with. And then, You bring me to cut to cut to pain! But she brings me pleasure. Anyway. Thanks for watching. This has been a long run. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.